brief comment or on what you think about the how it's going tonight and some of the issues that have been you've, you've sure. seen. So, you know, in the past, I know this is the first of this term, but we, we wouldn't have AGMs or AGs prior, right? Yeah. But it would always be the reading of the audit. And to me, it was a lot, it was dry and not many community members came. And so when we were in the planning stages, we we're like, you know, we need to get more community engaged. And so what better way than we thought, like, we gotta include well, food for one. <laughs> Entertainment was, that was a cool uh, opportunity. And to also look at what what can we share of messaging wise, like what is what is the main message, and that is of you know our our where like who we are as people, like our perseverance. Like I don't know how many times I said perseverance on my remarks because I'm just so proud of how far we've come, and I think that's something that you know this evening was about. You know, obviously yes, a lot of challenges still, but we don't give enough time to celebrate the successes, and we do have many successes. Um, and that's something where I think is, um, you know, where community, this is an opportunity. I think also to put faces to who's working in these departments. And so like, you know, when we, we, we were looking at the, the site and that we had a great team, planning team, and I'm like, you know, we have to make sure everybody, I was like, I don't even care, you guys work for us, get the hell out of here, <laughs> basically, right? Because community needs to know who is working in these departments. It's nice to put faces to names of who they're talking to. A lot of people have done that over the years. They always knew who was in the band. You'd walk in and knew them on a first name basis, right. and that's kind of been lost. Well, and that, with the that's expansion, because maybe? the growth. We have had except like exceptional growth in quick, like last five years. We've grown. I don't even know the percentage, but it's it's a lot. And I think that's why, like, you know, we're now over 900 employees. Why do you think that is? All of a sudden, like, just to shoot up like that. I think it's based upon the need. Like based upon what we're seeing as the need and the funding that's coming through, because like, well, part of this, part of the change, the trajectory that we want to change is why are we going after government? Because government stating that here, I got this fund, how can you use it? Sometimes I think we need to take a step back and say, why are we now going after all just government funding? What is it actually coming back? And what is the impact too? And can do we even need it? Because a lot of the time, sometimes. Uh, positions go not filled and the next thing you know you got money that you got to spend within two weeks before year end and then or in the, and it doesn't get carried over and then obviously we'll have to do some political advocacy on that part but I'm like I'm sick of chasing government mandate dollars we need to look at our own needs in the community and start to focus in the work around okay you know what we're going after this fund because we know we know mental health is a big priority right stuff like that so I think that's where we kind of really were able to um, you know capture what is it that we like i just wanted to always make sure that we're, we're there's no other community like us no other community like we are so unique and we are just so different that it's just like we have like it's a beauty to live here i like i i i come running home every time i travel because i'm just like this is home right and so we want to make sure we make it the best Kind of take that big breath. Yeah. yeah. When you get across that bridge. Yeah. Right? <laughs> once, once I get past Six Line Bridge, I'm just like <laughs> past Caledonia. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but you know this is a beautiful uh, event, and again, with our CEO and our directors and um, our program um, managers, you know, Darren maybe can point. How many services? A point of service did we have? But you know what? Another another cool point is. Yeah, jump in. We here. now have data. We've yeah. never ever. Believe it or not. Have ever kept data, and so now that that's maybe talk a little bit about Zach's role. Yeah, Zach's role is really uh, making sense of the data. The, the data that we had was all over the place, mm -hmm. and it was used for reports to provincial and federal governments, not for ourselves, yeah. not for our use. Uh, so, like the outcome measures that make sense to us, not what the government prescribes. Mm -hmm. So we would only track that data as a burden. I, I guess people would think of that as a burden, but for us, turning it around as an investment framework. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had this delta, how we're impacting this group of people in the community, and that'll help determine that. Um, so there's one aspect, and you talked about the points of service, Chief. Before the pandemic, it was around eighty to 90000 per year. So that's a phone call that's coming into the office. Mm -hmm. But you think about that in one year, that's a, that's a, a lot. But during the pandemic, because we had to shut down so much, it, it dropped to fifty to 60000 in the middle of the pandemic. And then, but, but we figured out a way to like have you know appointments and a hybrid model for service, so then we went up to eighty to ninety again, still in the pandemic, but now we're at one hundred and twenty. This past fiscal year, we're up to one hundred twenty thousand points of service, 
which is where it probably will continue to be. As long as they don't go back into the emergency. You think you're going to continue to be there or kind of grow? Because the, the yeah, points of service almost, also affect the amount of employees you have. That's right. And with That's 900 right. plus employees. Oh, there you go. See? That's yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. And I think the point about that is, um, you know, some people say, well, maybe we have too many. But if you look at it, look at, at this community as having all the services that we provide that municipalities don't, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to provide all the health services, you know, that they don't. Mm -hmm. So, and we don't have a proper tra tra transit system. So I think there's still room for growth. It's in the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in the works. We did a study. So I think what is going to happen is our a set of employees will move into different yeah. roles, modified roles, where they can have greater impact. Um, and that's already happening now. We're already doing that right now. See, and so. I think that, that with the complementary of, of the governance side, see, I, yeah. I think council, like that's where I mentioned in my, in my remarks of, you know, change management, because it's not like we're trying to eliminate councillors that feeling the need of separating the admin. Like, you know, we still have to be able to be, you know, making decisions and as obviously with Darren's role, but I'm like, we have to understand our role as governance. We don't need to be always involved in health administration and everything else. We need to be in Ottawa. We need to be in Toronto. We yeah. need to be at the Iroquois Caucus. We need to be, like, you know, we need more governance. And that's part of the role of Gunjukwa and the structure that we have tried to build out in the sense of getting to portfolios. If a council comes in and they have an interest, for example, a health background, well, let's give them that portfolio to see what kind of work that they can accomplish. Because I know even as my prior experience as a counselor, we all would attend the committees, right? We all had a committee. And then that committee, and then go to this committee, yeah. and then after all of it, it would go to general, co like a full, co I'm like, what the, we're, we're repeated, we're repetitive of that. I was always teasing calls, I'm like, well, we get pissed off at all the bureaucrats, we have our own bureaucracy right here. <laughs> so we're trying to streamline that, and I think that's what the beauty of the control is going to look like. Yeah, too much time in meetings, you know, it's yeah. good, I mean, that's our culture to meet and sit around the table, but. There was a lot of decisions that were like deferred even. Like we're going to committee and like the full council right. still get deferred. Right. So like we need to do a better job of before it comes to council. So right. that's Make, that's the piece. The due diligence. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and I think we've done a big improvement on that. So. Oh, and I want to ask, uh, so for the feasibility study, are, are you going to be, uh, like what were the, some of the results besides the findings of the lead for the uh, for, uh, four, uh, seven, sorry, 431 West Street? Like you, there that was yesterday the press release came out. So I'm just wondering what were some of the other results? There was quite a few assessments then. It was more environmental. Yeah. Uh, so really, all all the council dealt with it, uh, at that decision point <laughs> was looking at a, clean, a cleaning up of, of the of the site. But they're looking at one option is an apartment complex. So that could be funded through CMHC, uh, probably almost 100%. Um, so that's part of one of the options that are being considered. It's not the option that's being pursued, but that's the second phase of the feasibility study. Is, is the fact that it's not reserved land going to yes. impact, and how? Well, uh, that's another one. That's, that's another right. one. We get, that's right. I said that's it earlier. Advocacy. I, I'm sick of asking. Mm -hmm. Let, who's the, what is Canada going to? What are they going to do when they when they come down and it's not the ATR process and we've already we already got it done? What do you do? Tear it down? Yeah, <laughs> I think we really want to we 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 want to go through. We've had discussions around this. It's like a our own special status for for land. This is, that's in the city or we'll, when we can look at a cost recovery model on services that provide service from the city of Brantford to that site mm -hmm. right it's not a tax we're not we're not paying for their mayor we're not paying for their 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 infrastructure of, of staff etc only the services that are provided to that land exactly. right so what is the overall cost benefit and and just take away the, the existing framework that exists mm -hmm. the simple framework it's best not that it's not the ATR mm -hmm. it's just, it's a recovery model cost benefit and, we can, and as long as we can show benefits to both parties well more more us than, than Brandon. <laughs> so if you're going to build housing up there i presume that you'll be targeting it towards our band members of course yes 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 we have lots of members living in Brantford. yeah, yeah. Sure. is there any thought to going further up there i mean we are looking at the areas around even the woodlands once they clear it of any residential Yes. Of it finding anybody. <laughs> Eagle's Nest, yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're looking at commercial development there too, possibly. Because mm -hmm. there, there's that, that option was put on the table for West Street. And, you know, what, because of its location um, and services, Eagle's Nest is something that we, we still need to do. We still need to work on that. More, more appropriate for commercial development. Maybe a gas station. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know that, right? Good. <laughs> I think. Uh, the other, piece, the other piece of uh, 
what, what we were working with at AMO is we are doing a joint, pro well, it's been in the works for the last five years with Norfolk and Haldeman of the water line from Lake Erie up down oh, Highway yes, 6 yes. that will sell, that will be the southern portion of our territory of roughly 800 homes. If that project, and we had really good response um, to see that project through, once that is a key project, especially for Oneida Business Park, because yes. the key infrastructure is needed to be able to take the next step in development in that area. Yeah, and until that happens, we can look at uh, Canada infrastructure, uh, uh, the uh, I want infrastructure bank. I want a hotel. I think we need a yeah. hotel. I'm going to ask to go with that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> something, something. Awesome. Well, you got the golf course right across the street. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, they have the And where are you putting the casino? Attached to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's prime, I, as you said, it's a prime area for development right there. Yeah. yeah. And to be honest, you know, this is where I often got really frustrated with the old OFNLP agreement because at the end of the day, it's like it ranges obviously from the revs of all gaming in Ontario with the casinos. But like, well, we would see eight million to roughly twelve, to maybe maybe have a good 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 year. I think most fourteen. Yeah. But I'm like, why are they capping us when? Okay, it's it's helped us get us to where we are today. But what what does it look like when we can potentially make forty? But yet we're getting clapped at 8, 10, 12, 14. I, that's bullshit. I, I think that's bullshit. I think we're it's time that we can do our own. And we're a key highway, key location, hotel, convention. We got all the musicians and talent and entertainment. The list goes on. You gonna run? <laughs> I don't know. What? No, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's not what I heard. I, no, yeah. It's not what I heard either. I'm, I'm at a crossroad, and I'm just, uh, I'm weighing on everything. That doesn't make sense. No, it does. But you, how you, have you enjoyed your term as chief? I, you know what, I, it, it's, it's, it's like a roller. I, I, I think the best term, or the best, uh, example is a roller coaster. It's like, yeah, you were up, you go up, and I was down, and I was all around. And I think at this point in time, it's nice that we can actually see the work that we've done over the past years come into fruition. Like, there's so much happening, even through Kajukwa, the structure, through the administration, through, you know, I, I think at times people are like, well, what are, these, what are these guys doing type of thing? But it's like, you got to put in the work and the planning and the necessary pieces on the administration side to the governance to actually then see it through. So I'm excited to, to see the progress. And I think we've made a lot of progress. I definitely want to keep going to see that progress. Continuity and succession. That's the other part. Yeah, that's the government is not going to wait. Government is not going to wait. What are you doing during the pandemic? Plan. 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 Well, you're locked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. what we did. Yeah, it was a big part of our oh, yeah. It was. And I hear you're going to be gone for a year. Yeah. How did you hear that? I hear everything. <laughs> I've been around too long. <laughs> Yeah, just didn't take a break, but that doesn't mean I can't do special projects. Like oh, okay, so you may still be able to work on top. And it, it's still his role, he's just on a leave. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you everybody hear that? <laughs> <laughs> he's only on a leave, he's, so that means he has to come back, right? <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> well, the whole family's here, so where else would you go? Yeah, right, that's right. I mean, we all come home eventually, right? <laughs> and we, to be honest, why not bring bring the best of the minds to be yeah. leading this community? Sports that will come by. There's all kinds of number crunching. Number I was telling my brother, the CEO of GRE, I'm like, you better have a check ready for me by next month. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, now, so we get the picture. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and then we have been doing this live, by the way, just so you know when it's going. Because of uh, the media blackout that's been going on now with Meta, this will be showing up on my personal Facebook page because they shut down Turtle's Facebook page. What's the time frame on that? We don't know. I was talking to the lawyers the other day. I'm one of the witnesses in securing for the OCNA. So we're going to be talking about it. Yes. Yeah. I noticed that because I'm like, what the heck? Okay. Thank you so much for your.